Hello there. I don't know about you, but I had every good intention of getting up this morning and cracking on with a day, and I just felt really lethargic. <laughs> Look a bit like the wreck of the Hesperus, actually, but I have done two late night shifts, so that might be why. It was a good weekend, though. We had our family Zoom quiz, so we got to see the children and uh, had a bit of a laugh with them, caught up with them as well. And uh, I managed to do a few of my drawing games with my granddaughter, Honey. Uh, we tend to do, it's a very clever little um, thing that my daughter sets up, and uh, you copy the drawings so you can actually do the drawings at the same time. And at the end of the conversation, as always, you know, we kiss, love you, and then there's a little hug. And uh, this time we did the hug and she couldn't look at me and it was really, really hard. And I know that having been to work and talked to uh, my colleagues there and also the family when we're doing the quiz, I think a lot of people are finding now that the younger children are really struggling. I know my granddaughter, she's five, and uh, it's been an inordinately long time since life was normal, since she was at school, she could see her friends, I could go and see her, grand I could be with her. And we're no different to anybody else. It might be your own children who are little and they're asking you the questions, when is this going to end? When can I you know, go back to school or seeing my friends or just having a sense of normality? I don't know if you saw that fantastic news report um, somebody's invented something called a hugging curtain, which is like this plastic sheet that's got armholes in it. And you set it up on a thing like a washing line and then you can actually physically have contact with someone. And just that thing of being held, I think. And it just breaks the separation, it takes away the anxiety and it just makes us feel a whole heap better. But of course that's not physically possible for so many of us. And it's not possible for little children at the moment like my grandchild, my grandchildren, you know, my grand nephews as well, and all of those of us who are separated from the people that we love. So my lovely daughter, Lucy, um, very wise woman, she's found this beautiful story and uh, she gave it to me to read and she said it's really helped with honey, with this sense of anxiety, this, this separation of not being able to be with the people that she loves, to compound the fact that it doesn't matter where you are in the world, whether you're with someone or not, they always love you. So I thought I'd read it to you, and what Lucy's going to do is put the illustrations over my voice. So it might be something you'd like to share, perhaps, to, uh, to have read to your grandchildren or your own children, or maybe just for yourself to make you feel like that lovely hug. The Invisible String. It's written by Patrice Cast. It's illustrated by Joanne Lou Rielhoff, and it's dedicated to the children of the world and the magic of their strings. Lisa and Jeremy the twins were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly, it began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud it woke them up. Mummy! Mummy! They cried out and they ran to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go on, go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, said Jeremy. We're scared. Mum said, you know we're always together, no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we're in bed? Said Lisa. Mum held something right in front of them and she said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what Mum was holding. I was about your age when my mummy first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. You don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there? asked Lisa. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and you know that you are always connected to everyone that you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our hearts, said Jeremy. Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string? Lisa asked. She sure does, said Mum. And best friends like me and Lucy, said Lisa. Best friends too. How far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, Mum said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean? asked Jeremy. Yes, said Mum even there. Or a mountain climber, even there. A dancer in France, even there. A jungle explorer, even there. How about an astronaut out in space? Yes, even there. 
Does a string go away when you're cross with us? Never, said Mum. Love is stronger than anger, and as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and you can't agree about things like what film to see, or what game to play in the back seat of the car, or what time to go to bed. Ah, that's right, you two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as Mum chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming about all the invisible strings they have, and all the strings their friends have, and their friends have, and their friends have, until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they could clearly see no one is ever alone. Got through that just. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. And stay safe, stay well. And thank you so much for your company. I'll see you again very soon.